and welcome back to the Turd Fur channel. All right, so today's problem is an object on a hill, and our goal, we've got two objects, one's on a hill, and our job is to find the tension in that string and the acceleration of two blocks. Now, this is just a play on the basic problem that looks like this. And this is where most people start you out, is by learning a problem that looks like this. And so all we're doing in this is trying to find tension acceleration. And what somebody's done is this. They took this problem and they've just put it on a hill is all they've done. Now, I'm not working any problem in particular here on this one. Um, I'm going to do this problem, actually. I'm going to work it the first time. I'm going to work it the first time assuming that the hill is frictionless, so that there's no friction on my first example. And then for example number two, we'll go back the second time and we'll rework the problem and we'll maybe make mu equal to 0.3, something like that. I've got to be careful or this thing actually won't go anywhere. It'll be stuck on the hill. So i got to be careful on that. First of all, it's a connected object problem, so I need two free body diagrams. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make two free body diagrams. I wish I could do a better job making straight lines in this. Ah! So I'm going to make two free body diagrams. So I'm going to first take a look at the five kilogram one. And the first thing that comes out of my head is this. Every object always has an mg going straight down. Well, I'm going to call this one m2g since I'm going to call that my m2. And for that matter, now this is where y'all get messed up. This one has got an m2g straight down and it's got a tension going straight up. So that object is easy. Matter of fact, that object is just like in the whole, in the plain basic problem. Some people call them modified Atwood's machines. But anyway, that one's the same. Nothing's really all that weird or tricky about it. What's weird is this one on the hill. You see the one on the hill, we've got a tension pulling it up the hill. You've got an mg going straight down, and in this case, I should call that m1g. Uh, let's see, that m1g would be at an angle of 40, and then I've got a normal force at 90 degrees. Now, I'm going to assume this first one is frictionless, so that means I don't have a friction I have to draw. So now, I'm going to take that diagram, and as I take this diagram, what I'm doing is this. My free body is going to be based about this spot. So in other words, this will be my Y, that will be my X, and my free body, which means it's going to look like this. My N will be pointing straight up. My tension will be at 90 degrees to the normal. And then my MG, this is where people get messed up, or in this case my M1G, will be down at an angle of 40 degrees. If you don't understand how I got that angle, I've done it in other videos before. But if this angle is 40 here, then that means that's 50, therefore the next angle is 40 degrees. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get into, we're almost done with the physics in this problem. The physics in this problem now would simply be us doing our sum of the forces. So our sum of the forces X for this guy would be T minus M1G, and normally it would be cosine, but we're off the y-axis, so I'm going to go sine of 40 equals, I'm going to write equals to M1A, because it's moving in the x direction. My sum of the forces y would be N minus M1G cosine of 40, and it's going to be equal to zero because it's not moving in the y direction. This object isn't moving in or out of the plane. The object is moving up the plane. So my other object would be sum of the forces y would be equal to t minus m2g equals. Now we're assuming in this problem that that object is falling. So I'm going to write equals negative m2a. And that's just my way of working these problems. The falling object I treat with this negative sign in front of the MA over here. 
Uh, some teachers reverse your positives and negative axes, and that seems insane. So, anyway, by the way, the, here comes those big words I love to use. The physics is over. That's right. The physics is over in this problem at this point. This problem at this point will be nothing but a math question. So what I would end up doing is, for me, I would take this equation, solve for t. T would be equal to m1a plus m1g sine 40. And then I would take that t and substitute it back into that equation. And so we would have m1a plus m1g sine 40 minus m2g equals negative m2a. Everything with an A on one side, everything without an A goes to the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that A over, which would make it positive. This M2G, I'm going to bring it that way, which would make it positive. And this M1G, I would do the same thing. I would bring it that way, but it's going to become a negative. So I end up with M1A plus M2A equals, on the other side we end up with, M2G minus M1G sine 40. Now I can factor the A out of the left, M1 plus M2. Hey, I can always make these problems tell if you've done your math right. If you've done this problem right, they always end up looking like this. If you had three objects, if, if you had three objects, three objects would end up looking like A times M1 plus M2 plus M3. It would look like that. If you had four, it'd be the same thing. Plus, plus, plus. So if you ever do one of these problems and you end up with this, then you know you've messed up somewhere because they never, ever, ever look like that. So anyway, they always look like this. If you want to, you could factor G out of the other side. M2 minus M1 sine 40 and at this point, you could solve for your A. In this case, I think my object, M1 and M2, what were my objects? 1 and 5. So 1 and 5. So 1 plus 5 equals G times, let's see, 5 minus 1 sine 40. Let's see if we can plug this in a calculator. So 5 minus 1 sine 40, close my parentheses, times 9.8 is 42. Now we're going to divide that by 6, looks like, easy man. Divide by 6 equals 7.11, which seems very good to me. Your answers to these should always be less than G whenever you're doing these problems. Uh, now you should be asking, what happens if you work this problem and got a negative for your acceleration? What happens if your answer come out negative? I'll go ahead and tell you. It tells me two, one of two things. One, either the objects are going the opposite direction than you thought. So in this problem, I assumed that this one was falling and this one was moving up the hill. It either means you are wrong, they are not, or two, that they're actually just sitting there in equilibrium, which means that the sum of all your forces was zero if you got a negative. So it means one of those two things, and you'll have to go back and play with it. Now, I'm going to go back to this original problem. By the way, if you wanted tension, tension would be easy to find. Uh, all we do is go back. Where is it? Where is my T equals? All, right. all the way up here. And I would plug in 7.11 for A and... I could find my tension in there. What about if you were doing this problem, though, and it had friction in it? What would it look like? Well, here's your plane. You had your one object on top, one object hanging off over here, connected over a frictionless pulley. And so this one looked like, this one has no change. Tension up, M2G down. This object, Still pretty much the same. Tension that way, you had your normal force up, mg goes straight down, in this case m1g goes straight down, I forgot that last time. 
The only difference is if the object is moving up the hill, that means the friction in this problem, the friction, the mu n, would be the exact opposite the direction of your displacement. So it'd be like this. So your free body diagram should look like, we can do this. What should your free body diagram look like for the one that's got friction? Well, the one on the right, it's still pretty simple. It would be T and M to G. The other one, you'd have your normal force up, your tension at 90 degrees to it, your M 1G would be back, in this case, at an angle of 40. And then you would also have directly the opposite the direction of the tension, you would have that mu n in there. Which means when we did our problem, let's see, this would be, this one would be virtually unchanged. It would be T minus M2G equals your falling, so negative M2A. The object over here, sum of the forces X would be T minus M1G sine 40 minus mu N equals, and in this case would equal M1A, running out of room there, sum of the forces Y would be N minus M1G cosine 40. By the way, if you ain't figured out yet, N for something on the hill is always MG cosine of the angle. And say it one more time, the physics is over. This problem, I'm not going to go all the way through. You should be able to do it at this point. But what you're going to have to do is this. You're going to have to substitute in that N. And I would probably solve this equation for T and substitute it. So in other words, my equation would look like this. T equals M2G minus M2A over here. So my equation would look like M2G minus M2A minus M1G sine 40 minus mu times mu would be M1G cosine 40 equals M1A. So that's what mine would look like. And I'd do the same thing as last time. I'd want to bring, this time I'd want to bring that A over, and you'd have M2G minus M1G sine 40 minus mu M1G cosine 40 equals M1A plus M2A. Factor your A out, M1 plus M2. And at this point, you just plug in numbers and get your answer in this one. And again, if you plugged in your numbers and the answer come out negative, it means you're, this thing wouldn't even be moving in the first place. So anyway, this is where I'm going to leave you. Uh, Hare Krishna, and take it easy. Bye now.